Well, as I mentioned, his disappearance changed the way that U.S. law enforcement deals with missing children, not just in New York. Well, now the New York Post is reporting that the confessed killer of Eitan Pates, or Eitan, uh, may go free. Trace Gallagher is live in the West Coast newsroom with the latest on this historic case. Trace? And you remember, Jamie, that Pedro Hernandez was arrested last year in New Jersey after police got tipped off that Hernandez was actually confessing to people that he knew, his family, people in his church group, that he actually killed Eitan Pates. In 1979, Hernandez worked as a clerk at a convenience store in the Soho area of New York City. He claims he used soda to lure the six-year-old into the store's basement where he strangled him. He says he put the body out with the trash and put the boy's book bag in the freezer, but neither of them were ever found. Now, despite numerous searches, police have no physical evidence. I mean zero. No blood, no DNA, no fibers linking Hernandez to the crime. And the only witnesses are the ones who say they heard Hernandez confess. So even prosecutors say this case would be very difficult to win. So now Hernandez's attorney says his client is bipolar, schizophrenic, has a low IQ, and that his confession is unreliable. The attorney says Hernandez has been in jail for a year and it's time to either try him or set him free. So now you have investigators scrambling to come up with more evidence or they may have to let him go. And if they do try him, Jamie, the trial would likely be sometime in early to late spring of next year. It's Jamie. been so many years. Trace, thank you very much for setting up this so we can have this discussion with Doug Burns, former federal prosecutor, and Keith Sullivan, who is a defense attorney. Gentlemen, welcome to both of you. Thank you. you both practice here, so this, yes. is, this is all New York law. Let me ask you first, Eitan, yep. his parents, uh, they, they want answers. The they're, they're little yeah. boy. But other than this confession, there really is nothing. Doug, right. what do they do? Well, no, the problem is that it's a straight legal rule. Forget the facts. And lest anybody be confused about, oh, it may be a hard case to win. It may be hard to convince a jury. That's not the point. If they held the trial tomorrow, put in his confession, and had no corroborating evidence under New York procedural law, it's going to be reversed. You must have corroboration pursuant to New York criminal procedure law. At this point, Keith, do you think they can uncover any additional evidence? I don't. The FBI has been involved in this case. The police department has done a very thorough investigation. They dug up the basement of buildings where another individual who is incarcerated on pedophile cases, make no mistake, that individual is a Cold Stone pedophile and was held in civil court responsible for Eitan's uh, the abduction and death. He said that the body was buried in certain basements. They looked there. It, it didn't uncover it. As a result, the family in Jersey said uh, Hernandez has told us that he did something terrible in and around that his time. family. His family. And he worked at a deli up the block. He never confessed to them that he abducted, molested, or killed Aton. It was just that he did something terrible at that time. And as a result, that sparked a further investigation and arrest. There's been not a shred of evidence other than his own statement, which he's now recanted. If they do move forward with the trial, this yes. case, Doug, against him, what's more persuasive for the defense counsel to use? The fact that someone else was held civil responsible for the death and said he did it yeah. or the fact that they don't have circumstantial evidence beyond his saying that he did it well I think one of the big advantages of being a defense lawyer is you can work different sides of the room for lack of a better metaphor and it's a very good question and I think the answer is you would work every angle you would on the one hand as uh, Keith says and he's so right you have this Jose Ramos held liable civilly for the death. I mean, that's a huge point for a defense. And then, as you say, just sprinkle in that there's really no physical evidence whatsoever. But it's actually, you know, let me reverse course. It actually would be possible to get a conviction easier than you think. You put the confession in, a jury convicts him. But it's not a valid legal yeah. conviction. That's so, the problem. So he could appeal, Keith. Oh, absolutely. Oh, no. But there's no statute of limitations in this case, correct? Not, so if five years from now they do find something, can they hold him for what period of time? How much more? There's no statute of limitations, so what they would have to do is go forward on this case or move to dismiss without prejudice and they could bring it back. And I think they may end up doing that because they don't want to go forward in this case and have him uh, obtain an acquittal. It, it would be tragic. It's not comforting, Doug, that his own attorney says he's bipolar or whatever he is, that he could be a danger, but he didn't do this crime. 
or he didn't know right from wrong now, because if they do have to let him go, then he is out on the street. Oh, no, absolutely. And I mean, that's why, you know, some of the reporting is making this kind of a, a sensational issue, the idea that he would be out. But working off the previous point real quick, you know, not only do you have no statute of limitations, but you also have to be mindful of speedy trial. So in other words, once somebody's within the court system on a particular charge, as my colleague says, you either move forward or you dismiss. And that leads into your point, which is, oh, my God, what if he harms somebody down. else? Right. So, Keith, what does the prosecutor do? You know, this is a tough situation, and they really took it upon themselves. Cy Vance, who's the district attorney, campaigned on this issue. And he only campaigned on it because his uh, opponent had a meeting with the family of, of the Pat's family and said, I'm going to resurrect all these cold cases and solve them. So not to be outdone politically, he said, well, I'll do the same thing. And he threw himself into this Pat's case. It, it, it's just an albatross around his neck. I mean, it's, see, it's a political issue that it should never have been. See, that's an astute point real quick, because the fact of the matter is, why would you indict a case when you have somebody else found civilly liable for the death. I well, mean, you, you know were the that's prosecutor's gonna, you, office. You, Take you, us behind the scenes. Why? No, I mean, you know, as, as Keith says, I mean, you know, there's political pressure in a case that's decades old, and they kind of, you know, everything in law, you know as well as anybody, it's a balancing test. So it's like, you know, do we get the short-term gain of appearing to solve this thing today, knowing that we're going to have a problem down the road? I so mean, what's your prediction, each um, of you, Doug? I think they may go forward with the case. The federal prosecutors were going after as the number one suspect, Jose Ramos, who's already in prison. They never were looking at Hernandez, and they haven't since. So I don't know what the district attorney's office is going to do. They're in a really, really tight spot. I don't think they want to go forward if they really believe he's the, um, the, he's the, he's the right person, because it's, it's going to be an acquittal. But Cases isn't it true out. that you can get an expert who examines him? who says he has certain dreams, let's say, this is, I'm just saying, right. that show he had a tendency or propensity to do something like this. Isn't it possible if you go forward with the trial, there are things that you can raise conceptually that could convince a jury that he did it or he didn't do it? So shouldn't the family get their day in court? You might be able to convince a jury of that, but you have no corroborating evidence, as I think Doug said at the beginning and laid out very eloquently. You need that from a legal standpoint. So as a matter of law, you must drop the case? It's more of a legal point. I mean, I think the point you made real quick is that there may be some way to cobble together a corroboration theory. I think that's what you were saying. And the question is, what is corroboration? And they may be able to try. That's why I'm saying they may go forward. All right. Doug Tough Burns, Keith Sullivan. Tough for everybody. Um, we hope case. to see a resolution in this case. Thanks for your insight, both of you. Appreciate it.